What is up everybody? It is so good to be back here. Guys, you know, I just love creating these videos for you and I really hope you guys enjoy them. You know what I mean? You guys find value, you just, everything is, mm, it's just fabulous. We have got something special. I'm gonna be doing another hairdresser from my salon, Lunatic Fringe, South Temple, Salt Lake City, Utah. Stay tuned, it is gonna be absolutely fabulous. We are gonna rock, there's gonna be a mullet, a shag, all of it, and she's got Fabulous hair, so stick around, it's coming right up. All right guys, so we are here with Miguelie. Say what's up, YouTube. Hi. Yo, yo, yo. All right guys, so yes, she has fabulous, fabulous hair. So let's just get right into it. She parts her hair in the center, so let's go ahead and find that center part. All right, is that, is that center? Am I centered? Yes, no, maybe, all right, good. I have to use you guys as the mirror here. We don't really have a mirror set up, but that's fine. All right, so first thing is first, right? We wanna have a really strong focus in front. Then what's gonna be happening is that she's got a lot of weight through this area. She's got her length in the back, as you can actually see as I'm holding this out. We're not gonna touch any of this length. We wanna keep all of this but a lot of the main focus is gonna be happening in the front. So we wanna make sure, no matter what, that this is just dialed in so pretty right through here. So let's go ahead and get this started. We're gonna be cutting a lot of this shape in the front when it's wet. We're gonna dry it and then we're gonna cut the rest of it dry throughout the back. So let's go ahead and get started. So first things first, guys, when I start doing this, I always find, of course, you know, my section right around the hairline, okay? You know, that again is a really good place to start because we're gonna be starting in the shortest area. And her shortest area is gonna be right in her fringe area. So as you guys can actually see, we've got, you know, almost kind of like this curtainish style happening already. We really wanna detail this just a little bit more. So before I start, I really want to kind of look at, see what is happening here with everything. There's a little inconsistencies happening with some of these lengths, and I really want to look and see where do I want to spend a majority of my focus. There's a little bit more weight right here in this area. You know, there's a little bit more length right down through here. So first off, I'm going to be spending my time working on the actual perimeter itself, and then I'm gonna go in and work in the interior right through here. And as you can see, when I actually start to kind of push this back up, you can really kind of start to see where her hair naturally parts just like that. So I can really get that dialed in. So really starting to take from that fringe length and I'm really starting to blend a lot of this out. And as you can see, if I was to turn her just like that, you can see how I push that forward and I'm cutting on the opposite side of my finger so I can really st start to emphasize that actual length itself. And again, really just working those end pieces right through there. Now, what I want to do is I'm actually starting to work on the inside of some of these sections just a little bit because as we all know and even if you guys don't know short hair pushes long and now I'm actually going in and I'm creating a little bit more of like like short pieces inside of that to help push that fringe out so it really kind of kicks out in these areas just like that. So again, working this bottom perimeter, and then I'm actually taking this up and I'm working on the inside right through here. So now what we wanna do is let's go ahead and take our, pre, like our next section, which is gonna be right behind our previous section. Again, now what I really wanna look at is I wanna to start to really kind of look and see, because again, we're not going to be taking anything further past like this point because this is really gonna live up through this area. It's not gonna live forward. So we don't wanna keep 
taking these sections down through this area. So I really want to start to work and look at these sections back through here. So I'm really starting to just kind of lightly detail those, working that forward. And I'm not taking a ton off, but we're just detailing it just enough. Drop my comb, you know, it happens. It happens to the best of us. Luckily, these, these floors are so, so clean. So, you know, and even if they weren't clean, you know, who doesn't mind a little dirt in their hair? Just kidding, there's no dirt on these floors. They are clean. So again, you know, like one of the things I'm really starting to, because when you're starting to create something like this, you really wanna work on the inside of these sections, just like that. Like that is super crucial because that inside movement, guys, is what's really gonna make it to where this haircut lasts a lot longer. Now, because again, like if you're not doing that inside kind of texturizing, that's the difference between a haircut that's gonna be amateur or more professional. And I dropped my comb yet again. Wow, that was actually kind of embarrassing. Don't normally do that, but you know, it is what it is. And as you can see, I'm just almost taking like these kind of like pie sections and just adding just a little bit of movement. You can see it's just a little bit of hair. It's not a ton. All right guys, so now that we have kind of taken care of the front, uh, we're gonna actually start to dry this and then we're gonna actually finish cutting everything else. And this area right through here, we're gonna be removing a lot of weight in this area because whether this hair comes forward or it comes back, you still want this movement and this area right here to support the front area, but then also be able to leave a lot of this length down through here. So we're really just gonna be emphasizing very feminine and very sexy mullet, shag. You know, we don't want it to be too masculine. We just want sexy, sexy, sexy. So let's go ahead and get this dry. Let's do that now. All right, guys, so when you guys are dealing with enough hair for a small village is what she has. She has so much hair, you know what I mean? You really wanna make sure when you are blow drying that there are two things that are gonna make a blow dry successful, heat and tension. You know, whether or not you're getting your heat from a blow dryer, flat iron, curling iron, and then the, the amount of tension you have in there. Because again, when we are gonna be going to cut this, you know, dry, I wanna make sure that these ends are really refined so I can really see how the hair is moving, okay? The other thing I wanted you guys is that we actually put her in gray so you guys can start to see a little bit more of this length. I apologize for the black before, you know, knowing that, you know, sometimes it's hard to see that contrast. So let's go ahead and get started, guys. Now the really cool thing, okay, now as we're really starting to see how great this fringe is starting to look, the one thing I really want you to pay attention to here though, is that right behind here, there is a ton of hair, which essentially is gonna be this area right through here. So really, really wanna make sure, we're not gonna be taking a ton off the actual length itself, but we're gonna be going in and we're going to really make sure that this inside has this weight removed right through here. So when it does fall down through here, you're still gonna get a lot of that movement. And then we're gonna work around, you know, throughout this back area and whatnot. So let's go ahead and get started right through this top area. Now, the other thing is that you could go in with a razor, of course. I'm gonna actually go in with a scissor. You know, I find that working with a scissor when you are working with a texture like this, it doesn't quite shred the cuticle as much. And I wanna go in and I'm just gonna go in and I'm gonna start removing some of this. And you can start to see how that, that hair kind of came out is I'm actually removing just a little bit of hair right through here. Now, as you can see right through this area, I'm gonna come in just a little bit more right through that area and then I'll come in right underneath that. And you can see my scissors kind of coming through on that opposite side. And so I really start to work, you know, those inside portions just like that, you know, and that's going to make it, when this kind of starts to fall, you're even gonna get a lot more kind of flip 
happening up through this area because you have that hair that is kind of supporting that underneath. And you can actually start to see how that's kind of starting to look a little bit more kind of see-through up in that area. And that, again, is really gonna make, when she goes to kind of shake through that, you know, you're gonna start to see that movement, again, kind of like not falling so much in that face area, or you can really start to focus on that fringe. And then again, I'll take right through here, and you can kind of see how that section is. And if you think about it, it's gonna be kind of like pie sections. If this is gonna be the top portion, you're gonna have like these little pie sections that'll go up in this portion. And then you can actually see where this section is right through here. Now, the other thing is that when we were consulting before, you know, uh, Michele was like, she does not want her length touched at all. If you guys are watching and you guys are a hairdresser, um, and even if you're a consumer watching, and I'm sure you can vouch for what I'm about to say, you know, a lot of times when people are, their nonverbal communication where they're just like, you know, I just really don't want you to touch my ends, touch my ends, touch my ends, touch my ends. And she was kind of holding onto her ends just like this. So use that as a cue, as nonverbal communication, don't touch the ends. Like if she wants to keep her ends, I'm not gonna take my scissors down here and start cutting down through here. I'm gonna leave my scissors kind of away from this area. So a lot of times when hairdressers, they will just, start cutting and they'll keep cutting and that's when a client or a guest is going to be very unhappy with their hair because they're just like dude like you cut off my you cut off my ends or their fringe is too short you know they're like i really really like the length it's just a little bit too thick so pay attention to that guys you know what i mean like if you really want to be a great hairdresser you know listen to the cues of what the person's saying that's just my little uh, ted talk for the day so thanks for coming you know, but this is stuff that I've learned over the years, right? I've been in this industry for 25 plus years and you know, I've made my fair share of mistakes. You know, we are in the customer service business, guys. And you know, if you're not here to make the customer happy, you know, I mean like, what are you doing in this industry, right? Like get rid of the ego, okay? Like people that come see me, they're the ones that pay for my lifestyle. And so I wanna make sure no matter what, like I'm gonna give them my two cents on what I think is gonna look best on them. But at the end of the day, like they have to be happy with their hair. And if they're happy with their hair, I'm happy. And when I go in and I start to cut texture, guys, one of the things that I'm actually doing is it's a very visual thing and it's a, and it's a feeling. And so when I'm looking, I can actually look into this light right through here and I can kind of start to see through some of this where I wanna to start to cut. This little section right here is still a little bit thick and so I'll go right into that and I'll take a little bit of weight right out of that area. And again, I dropped my comb again. I think that's like the fourth time today. Fourth? Fifth? Is it the fourth? fourth. Yeah, fourth time. What is going on? Somebody's got a case of the Mondays, man. Seriously, what is that? I don't know. I guess it's the amateur hour right now. All right guys, so the thing about it is that we still really wanna keep this length, but I mean, again, she has a ton of hair back through this area. And I mean, it is, and it's awesome. I mean, like she's just got a grip of it right through here. So I'm gonna to start to do exactly kind of what I did right through this, like this front kind of quadrant right through here. I'm actually gonna to start to work that. And again, I wanna stay away from that length. So when I go to like lift these sections up, you know, right through here, I'm gonna have these sections, but this, this would essentially be like that danger zone right down through this bottom portion, which essentially would be like this back little like length area. I don't wanna to touch any of that, okay? But I wanna to touch this top portion, so. Stop talking, Jake, let's just cut some hair. And I might go a little bit more aggressive right through this back area. Because again, she's got a lot more hair back through here. You know, and you can kind of see where I kind of cut open some of these portions right through here, and I cut open some of the portions right through here. Now cutting open some of those portions are going to allow that pieciness to kind of come through. 
and I always cut in the direction I want the hair to go. And as you can see, I'm cutting out this way. So I'm actually cutting towards you guys on this camera because again, I want that hair to move this way. I don't wanna cut that way, I wanna cut this way. It's five times, five times. Dude, that is like a record, you know what I mean? Like, again, what is happening? You guys are probably gonna comment, who's this guy? You know, I really want you guys to pay attention, right? Before she, we actually cut a lot of that movement in there, you could kind of see there was not, not necessarily a weight line, but your eye was kind of drawn this direction. Now when you start to look at it, you start to look at all those pieces, and now your eye is drawn up and down. And so you can actually look and see kind of like how accentuated like that length actually looks, which it actually looks amazing. So you're, you're essentially now connecting from these short pieces in front to these kind of like long pieces in back. And she does have enough hair to spare to remove, which is a good thing. But again, you, you know, we're not just kind of going in to remove, like this, this has rhyme and reason to it. There's a reason why we're doing a lot of this. We're not just going in to just remove weight. A lot of times people like, there's hairdressers um, that you'll see online or if you go to a hair show, which those aren't really happening now with you know, COVID, but you'll see like a hairdresser do like something specific and you're kind of like, oh cool, like, but you never really understand why. I actually want you guys to understand why I do a lot of the things that I do. And the other really cool thing too about doing a lot of this is that you start to look at this like back perimeter length and you can actually kind of see how some of that short hair will help connect some of that back perimeter length. And this back perimeter length is actually pretty long, right? So, you know, cutting that inside really makes it to where there is going to be, you know, now some short hair with some long hair that'll really kind of start to let that kind of come alive. If you guys are liking what's happened, go ahead and give a, a like, a comment. Let me know what you guys think. And if you want me to cut your hair, your Salt Lake City, comment. I'd love to cut your hair. I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it. You know what I mean? Plus like she's just pretty, you know? She's such a beautiful girl. So, you know, and this suits her. This suits her, her look, like she rocks it, she wears it so well. You know, that's what's kind of fun. And I cannot wait for her length to even get longer because I think she's trying to grow it out even longer. So like the, like the mullet shag is just, again, it just looks fabulous on her, right? The face shape looks amazing. We've created width, we've created height, we've created things that just really bring a lot of focus to her beautiful eyes. She has great lips, like everything. So again, just throwing out those compliments. Yes, he looked fabulous. You know, it was actually kind of interesting because I've always wanted to cut Miguel's hair. Then she asked me if I would cut her hair and I was like, oh my gosh, I would absolutely love to cut your hair. So. You know, I love working on this type of texture hair. I love working on all types of texture hair, it doesn't matter. You know, when you can really kind of transform and just make people have better hair days. So where they just love their hair, you know, it just works for them. You can see how much, like when you go and you actually kind of push these fringe, you kind of push it to the side, just like that versus having, if I was to kind of shake this and it kind of curls in, right? That completely kind of changes the look, you know? And that's the great thing about styling hair, guys, is that, you know, you can really, you know, slim somebody's face in or widen somebody's face by the way you style it. Whether you push something out, you push something in, it's straight, whatever it may be. When it comes down to finishing, we actually use this to blow dry her hair. This is from Orbe. It's uh, Super Shine Light. It's a shine product. I've used it before on people. I've used it wet, I've used it dry. We're gonna use just a little bit of it dry just to kind of bring out more of like the definition in her hair. So when you actually go to use this, you know, and again, like, it's kind of like a lotion consistency. And so when we go in, we're gonna apply this, just like so, okay? Now, and I just really want to just kind of piece out that hair. Like, she's got a ton of hair, and I know I've repeated myself, 
But the thing about it is she's also got a very coarse textured hair. And having a very coarse textured hair, you know, she's not gonna have to wash her hair for like probably about a week. She was like, thank you so much for blow drying. I'm like, yeah, you're not gonna have to do it for like a week. So that's a good thing, right? I mean, if you can get away with not having to wash your hair for a while and just like kind of let your, let your hair do its thing. But a lot of times that coarse textured hair, I have very coarse textured hair, it doesn't get too oily, so you can actually add a product like this. It already feels like the haircut of my dreams. Oh, see? <laughs> see, she digs. This is a good thing, guys. I really, really hope you guys dig what I did today. I actually think I have a hair on my face right here. I don't know. Can't really see it. I hope you guys dig what we did today. Honestly, I love sharing what I do. I just love doing hair. So. My name is Jake Thompson Hair. I want to thank Michaela. You look absolutely fabulous. Thank you. I, like it, it already feels exactly like what I was hoping for. You know what I mean? She has fabulous hair. Thank you so much. Guys, thanks for tuning in. I will see you guys in the next video.